Hi everyone, I've got the coolest thing to show you now. It is the Power Apps Search and Replace. This means that you can now search across your Canvas app for objects and you can replace the text and the name of those objects. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see how that operates in relation to, in particular, global variables, collections, and, and even context variables. So I'm gonna dive straight in and we're gonna take a look at that. Here I am, I'm in a little test app that I've put together. In fact, a lot of the names of the objects are quite poor at the moment. I'm not gonna do a full rename because the reality of renaming objects is we know that we can, we can go on to objects and just rename them. And these are just discrete objects. We know that I can sort of say uh, something like BTN um, col uh, collect first N. So that would be easy enough. Now the issue for us has never been that we couldn't do that. The issue has been more around things like global variables. So what you can see here is that I've actually got a global variable. It's called GV my test. And I then have another global variable. It's the same global variable, but it's it's called GVMI test, but it just renames it in a, in a different way. So what I'm now going to do is show you that we can actually use the search function in order to be able to, to do that. So to do that, we need to move across to search. Uh, just be a bear in mind that you've got a find, so you can find the thing that you're actually looking for. So. Uh, um, but you do actually need to move over to replace in order to be able to replace it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, well, it was called GV my test. Uh, and I can see that it's actually not case sensitive. That's okay. I can live with that. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go on to replace there. So I'm going to say GV my test is now going to become GV awesomeness. And what I need to do is go all the way down to the bottom to see replace all. And I'm going to say replace all on that. And it's going to say replace three instances in the app with GV awesomeness. Now I've got to be a little bit careful with that because uh, in my head, I've only actually named it twice. I think it's just because of how it sort of thinks about what it's done um, and how it's done under the hood. So I've got it twice, but then I think that it considers the original creation of that global variable uh, as a third place. It kind of makes sense as well. So I'm now going to replace it as GV awesomeness. So click on that. It can't find GV my test, so GVA. Um, so it can find GV awesomeness. If we actually look inside the, the variable there, it's become GV awesomeness. And the second instance we've got that is also called GV awesomeness. And as far as I'm concerned, it really is amazing to think that you could actually do that in an app because there's so many situations where you've got so far through the app and you just can't see, um, you can't see how many places that you've used that. We've got a really simple, app here but there are certainly a lot of instances where uh, where you might uh, where you would find it in all sorts of different places drop downs wherever you you name it so go and add, take a look now one thing to note before we kind of go too much further is that for new apps you will get to see this search option but um, but if you aren't seeing that what you need to do is get a settings so if you've got an old app then you need to get upcoming features and ironically this one is actually called search um, so we will need to go on to to that and you can see that you've got this option of search on and off. So you just saw it appear and disappear uh, as I selected that. And it's a preview feature. It may change a little bit, but you should have a lot of confidence that it's actually gonna work quite well for you. So we've looked at global variables. Uh, I've got a context variable here. Um, I can do the same thing with a context variable. So I can do a, uh, a close and uh, I'm just gonna change this one to be uh, false 
So I've actually got two buttons where we where we got some operation on the context variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search on CTX. And you've got CTX my context. In fact, I'd almost go so far. Um, so we've got CTX my context. We can see the overall variable being named, uh, and also you can see um, there's a few instances of it being used here. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say CTX my context, um, and I'm going to now going to call it CTX true false. You know, it could be whatever it is that's important to you in your app. And now head back down to the bottom. And then what we're going to do is replace all. Now, I can select on these different items. Now, when you click on the variable here, you're not getting to see anything. When you click on it here, so you've got the overall name in the variable in the context of the screen because it's a context variable and and also the um, the it in the context of where it is. In fact, I'm noticing that we're not we're not actually moving between the various objects. So perhaps if we see saw CTX my context, yeah, we can actually see that we can move around it a bit more easily. I'm sure that will change in time. Uh, so now we've got the option to replace all on this. So click on replace all. Replace four instances of the app uh, with CTX true false. Yes, I'm happy with that. Um, and now we can actually see that it says CTX true false. Um, so now we can move back onto this. And this is the really cool one, collections. Collections are really kind of hard to um, to rename because you don't have a great search for for collections. Um, you, you can't see where they're where they're where they're defined within your app. And so what I've got here is a clear collect here, clear, clear collect, call my collection courses. But in the second instance, I actually just do the first n. So let's see that in operation. So we'll do collect first n. That's just going to be three items, and this is collect all of them. I get to see all the item. Uh, and in the context of um, we do call my, I think it's called call my collection. Okay, and I'm now going to change that to be call, um, what would I call it? Um, call courses, something like that. Something like that. So call courses, and I've got my option to replace all. So this is another interesting one. So we've we've actually got this named in the context of the overall app, and we've also got it named inside these two buttons here, and we've also got it named inside the gallery. Isn't this amazing? So I'm so excited. I've actually never done this before. So I'm now going to go replace all on this. So we've got call courses replace all. Do you want to replace four instances across the app with concourses? Yes, I do. Click replace. And now let's see what it does. Now, the reason why we're not seeing anything here is because I just need to go and play the app and then do collect first n, and it has actually worked. That is so, so amazing to see that. Um, now, I just do one more thing actually, because um, in terms of how variables are named, there is actually a naming convention. So I've noticed here that um, in terms of I'm naming my objects GV um, something, 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 um, and in actual fact, it's kind of saying, well, do you know what, um, you know, I'm, I should really call it GBL. Now, I don't know. I'm just now going to say, well, let's do replace all um, and let's see what this thing does. Now, do will I get GBL as the prefix? So replace three instances across uh, across the app with um, GBL. I can replace that. OK, so now when I go into there, I can see it says GBL awesomeness, which might be a way if you found that one person's got a naming, certain naming convention and someone else has got another one, you might be able to align it a bit better using this. And I'll just do one more thing just in case. Um, so I'm going to call, I'm going to do a rename on GBL, GBL awesomeness. Awesomeness. Okay. 
um, and I'm going to do GBL or some ness. And I'll just put GBL at the end because I want to do a little experiment with this because I want to see what happens the second time around I start to rename. So I'm now going to do replace all. Um, I've got GBL awesomeness GBL. It's obviously it's a, a bit of a fictitious way of doing this. And now what I'm going to do is just going to do a rename of GBL back to GV. And I'm kind of thinking that we're going to get GV awesomeness GV. So it just means you might need to be careful with this. So I'm going to say GBL, go and have a look for that. And I'm going to do GV. Um, and it's saying that, let me just see how many times it reckons it finds it. It's actually finding it five times. And we're, um, just because I can't actually move this out, oh, I can move it out. Um, yeah, it's it's finding, in fact, it finds it in the first place. It's not finding it in the second place. So let's see what this thing actually does. Let's do a replace all on this. Um, replace five instances across the app with uh, GV. Okay, that's fine. Click OK on that. And now I'm just going to look on there. In fact, it has replaced it at the, the start and at the end. So do be careful with this, that if you've got something fairly generic, a couple of uh, characters, then you might find that you know, the way in which you do the replacement might do some really odd things. So um, even so, this is this is really great. It's going to be quite transformational in terms of being able to make some changes to your app so that we, you can actually uh, make it more aligned to best practice. What I'm now going to do is going to jump across to what best practice actually looks like, and I'll provide you with a link to that as well. So this is the blog post. This actually goes back quite far to 2018 about app coding standards and guidelines. It's really relevant to what we're doing here. So the trick is here that you just do hit the download to get the download of the white paper. It's just a PDF so you can download it onto your computer. And the bit I would really focus you on, um, it's a little bit further down. And so between pages six and seven, and what you can see is they're saying, well, hey, if you've got a button, abbreviate it, you know, prefix it with BTN. If you've got camera control, it's cam and so on. Uh, they don't actually go into, I don't know if they go into talking about global variables, but most people say GBL, galleries, gal, group, GRP, etc., etc. These are great ways of you actually naming your objects so that if someone comes along, uh, I don't know, in a couple of years time or a couple of months time, then they'll be able to understand what you were trying to do, what the purpose of that button is. And it will then mean your search works so much better across your apps because you can have hundreds of objects in an app. So what do you think? Power Apps Search and Replace, is that one of the like coolest things that's come to Power Apps for such a long time? If you think about the naming conventions came out in 2018, here we are in 2022, and now you've got the option to actually do that search and replace. That's fantastic. Hope to see you again in future videos, and uh, yeah, uh, see you again soon.